I started carving wood a couple months ago and I've really enjoyed it. I think I'm drawn to the simplicity of it. There's not a lot of power tools involved. It's just some knives and patience. You know, you can lose yourself in your work, which I, I really enjoy that. Something I've been looking at lately is a type of carving called relief carving. And that's where you, you go in and you remove material from the wood to reveal an image. And that looks pretty challenging to me. It's something I'd like to do. I've never tried it before. And uh, I think I'm ready for that step. So I'm gonna head down to Woodcraft and talk to him about the best kind of material to use and pick up a couple new gouges. How you doing, I'm Eric. I'm Joe. Nice to meet you. So I've been doing uh, some carving lately. Okay. Mostly crosses. Right. Okay, but I, I'm ready to get into something a little bit bigger and I'm thinking more of a, a relief type okay. carving. Mm -hmm. So I grabbed a piece of basswood here. I'm thinking about ripping this down and then using these two pieces here to make my cross. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then to carve it on this face here. So what would you recommend that I use to well, do that? Once you decide what you're going to carve on there, you're, you're going to draw your pattern on. Yep. You're going to use a V tool similar to this to outline it. Okay. The V tool, you can outline and it, it's a V, so you don't have a sharp corner on the remaining material. All, All right. right. Then in the bottom of the V cut, you would use your knife to make a stop cut, and then use a flatter gouge to remove the material to the stop cut. Okay. And that's what you would use your gouges to cut back to to remove the material. Come in from it. So we're going to use the, the V around my border. Yep. Uh -huh. A knife in the center of the V mm -hmm. to create a stop cut. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take a gouge and remove the material up to that point. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And then which gouges would you recommend? Well, this is a number three 12 millimeter. Nice. Uh, three indicates the, the curvature of the tool. Oh, okay. And 12 is obviously the width. Nice. That feels nice, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> it's a very nice tool. It's yes. got like a nice weight to it. Mm -hmm. Fits in the palm nice and comfortable. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> Like it's made for it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. All right, so number three, mm -hmm. what else would you recommend? Um, once you get the majority of the stock removed, you're going to want to start adding detail. Okay. So you just use something with more of a curve in it. Uh, we have a number nine, I think it was. Yep. This is a number nine. It has a lot of curve, almost like a half circle. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. And that would uh, create oh, little valleys. Yep. Um, maybe uh, if you were maybe putting a grapevine in there or something, you could actually stab in and create a circle. Oh, yeah, yeah, And then yeah. cut back to it to create a little ball. Oh, okay. You know, All like right. Like a grape or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. All right, man. Yeah, that would probably cover just about, you know, what you're going to do. And, and, that and I'm sure as you progress in your carvings, you're going to want more and more and more. And oh, yeah. It's just different shapes and things. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that should offset the knives that I already have. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, they, they should complement them very well. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh huh. So the first thing I did was take my block and rip it in half. Then I marked a couple center lines and I cut my joints in and we're going to glue it up. Once it's dry, we'll be ready to go. Got it worked out in my head and a little bit of drawing on here. And I'm gonna start with the uh, border. Go. I'm happy with where 
where I'm at, uh, you know, I envisioned this tree of life type image and uh, I've got the bottom done. I'm happy with it. This is all down to finished dimension and I've got some texture in here for the bark and whatnot and um, I've got you know different heights to give it some some character and dimension so it's been fun I think I'm ready for paint. Uh, I'm super happy with how it came out. I mean, the first relief carving I've done and I enjoyed it. It was a ton of fun. I learned a lot too. Uh, the, the corners, they were a little bit harder uh, than I anticipated. And along the way, you know, I started doing a little back cutting in here and I really liked how that looked, but I'm, I couldn't be happier with the piece. It, it, I think it looks really good. I'm super happy with it. I did use a little dough in here uh, to fill up some of these joints, but uh, it looks great. I'm gonna whitewash the whole thing first and get a little bit of white on it, background and the tree, and then I'm just gonna start throwing color on it. Maybe some, some bronzes and coppers and definitely some golds uh, and some black for the background, I think. And yeah, we'll go from there, you know, see, see, see how it looks. Just keep layering colors down. <laughs> I couldn't be happier with how this came out. I mean, I really enjoyed the process. It was challenging, you know, these, these little areas in here were really hard and trying to get the texture right so that it actually looks like bark. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed the entire process. And eventually doing this little back cut on there, man, that just, that brought it to life, you know, that just really made it stand out from the background. One of the things that's super special about this for me is the fact that it's not often that I get to make something and then keep it at the end of the day. So it's gonna be special for me to hang this up on the wall and enjoy it. And the cool thing is I know eventually, you know, my daughter will put it up at her house. And she'll be able to tell people that, you know, her dad made it. And I think that's pretty cool.